Okay, really quick. So let's go ahead and get going. Folks, keep adding yourselves to the meeting minutes as, as participants. Apologies for being a little flaky this morning on the agenda. <coughs> Let me go ahead and share the agenda so we can talk to one unified thing. Okay, so um, always first up is agenda bashing. So quick review of where we're going. We'll review action items. We've got some of those that carried forward from last week. Um, review of development activity um, with Frederick and Kyle. Review of use case mapping. I think, John, you're leading this this week because Prem is actively flying right now. Is yeah, right? yeah. Cool. probably not much, but we'll do it quickly. Cool, cool. Then we've still got the open thing about meeting time planning. Um, and then action plans for the coming week. And then you know, with any remaining time, there's conceptual review stuff we can do. So, awesome. Uh, anyone else want to add something to the agenda that's not already there? Um, I'm gonna volunteer Kyle to talk about CRDs since there was a lot of work done on that. Okay, so that's under uh, code, code activity. activity. Yep. Yeah, there was a ton of stuff happening, a lot of it very cool. So anything else folks would like to add? Awesome, cool. So um, let's go ahead and dive right in then. So from action items um, that we had from last week on code activity, uh, Frederick, have you thought any more on the in cluster auth stuff? Yeah, so there were two things I ended up looking at. Um, the first one was, uh, so I, I ran a few tests and in order to work out uh, the in cluster auth. So since we're writing in Go, uh, Kubernetes provides a very nice way to grab a uh, configuration. So basically you can call in cluster config method in the Go client mm -hmm. and the, that configuration has everything you need in order to, in order to access the API. The second thing that we need to do from there is the, the default uh, service account that it gives us uh, has almost no privileges. Um, you can do version uh, and that's about it. So what I added into it was, uh, I, so I created a new service account and I uh, gave it uh, access to a limited set of, uh, of APIs that I enumerated and uh, that worked out uh, that worked out well. So I think what we'll need to do is we'll probably need to create at least one, maybe two service accounts with different, depending on the roles that we want, uh, which will, I, which will monitor the uh, new pods that are being created, new nodes that are being created. Uh, we have to work out if we want to modify any of uh, any of this. For example, do we need to do we need the ability to create a new pod or do we need the ability to create uh, to add containers or, or so on. So if we do then we and then we can add these uh, privileges to to the network service manager pods. So uh, so that was pretty easy. The, the second thing that we can add in uh, is we can actually add through the pod spec uh, capabilities. So for example, one capability that we will almost certainly need for certain SDNs is the net admin capability. So we can actually inject, so all these capabilities are dropped uh, by the container runtime by, by default. And we can opt to not drop things like cap net admin or so on. And uh, that gives us the ability to manipulate the network interfaces and, and so on. Um, of course, we'll still have to, we'll still recommend that users test and make sure that, uh, that things work because there's other things besides capabilities that may block a user from, from being able to work. So for example, if SE Linux is, is um, <laughs> uh, is active. Uh, it's possible that it can be configured to deny, despite the fact that you have a net admin account access. Uh, same thing with the, the Ubuntu side as well. They have their own uh, uh, SE Linux. Uh, it will say it's equivalent in terms of uh, functionality that can block um, 
these type of requests. Um, and actually, if 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 they want, if a user wants to go all out, they can actually fine tune the request so it only allows certain types of requests that match and the network service manager use case and block others as well. So there's there's ways they can do that, but but generally we want to make sure that they have the tests that I ran did not have SE Linux block them, but uh, it, it's something to keep in mind if, if you see things fail. So, yep. so anyways, so, so the two things are service accounts, add a service account, bind a pod to the service account on creation and the ability to, to retain capabilities through the, through the pod spec, uh, which we'll likely need for adding things like adding interfaces. Awesome. Cool. <coughs> this is good. I'll, I haven't added these to a document yet, so I'm going to, uh, I'm actually going to see about enabling the uh, network service manager wiki and adding some of this information in because it doesn't, it doesn't really feel like it belongs in a repository, but it's still information that we need. Uh, and so if we add it in as, if we enable the wiki, assuming it hasn't been enabled yet, then we can document all of this kind of stuff uh, inside of it for people to, to reference. Uh, I mean, another option is we could document on in, in some document directory as well. So that way it, it lives along with the GitHub repo. But I mean, for this kind of information, it's, it's true regardless as to this, the state of, of the container system itself. So, yeah. so I think the wiki is a good, uh, a good approach here. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Uh, that, it sounds like you've dug a lot into that. And I, I see we were getting some, some folks about, um, <laughs> about not being a privileged container or having well-defined capabilities. I, I, I think it's generally good practice to be able to do precisely what you need and no more. Yeah, cool. I, have, and was, um, yeah. I have a little bit experience regarding this. I did it for some other project also. And I was playing with the same thing which you just described in the last few minutes. So. Last night I was playing with the service accounts for the network service mesh. So I created one commit and I pasted the link in the chat just mm -hmm. to give a little bit of perspective what you were talking about right now. Cool. So folks can go over and see. I'll, I'll try and create a pull request later today with this. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Excellent. Cool. So then next up we had Kyle talking about CRDs. Yeah. Um... Right, so I think we reviewed this on the last call. So CRDs are custom resource definitions and it's kind of the way that we've decided to expose. Um, it, it's essentially, it essentially allows us a way to use the, the, the standard Kubernetes. Um, you know, they'll, they'll essentially act as a database for us. They'll set up, um, we'll be able to use kubectl and everything like that for all of our resources essentially. So, so over the last couple of weeks, I. I was able to, to figure out a way to, to essentially take our protobuf file. Um, and from that, obviously, we can generate Go code that has a bunch of structures inside of it. Um, essentially, then I was able to, to create a types.go file that references those structures as, as the spec and then use all of the Kubernetes code generation tools to, to generate everything we need uh, and kind of stitch it all together. Um, and so Frederick and I spent a bunch of time last week reviewing that, uh, and he merged that this week as well. Right now, there is one, there is one problem with, with what was merged that I'm still looking into, and that is, uh, that is issue number 59. So deletion doesn't quite work as expected right now, so I won't bore everyone with the details on that, but if you want to go look at that, that issue, you can take a look at that as well. Um, I also opened 58 and 57. Those aren't really issues, but more things that Frederick and I, during the review, were like, yeah, we should look into that as well. Um, th those aren't really bugs. So basically what's in there um, should work now. I also uh, opened, and, and Pratik, this is what I referenced in the issue that you opened as well. I, I, I opened PR60, which actually includes a bunch of sample configuration and scripts um, and updates uh, the, 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 the file that kind of documents how you might want to try this out with Minikube as well. So that, that was pushed out as well. Um, and then I do have PR61 open, which, fi which fixes a few bugs uh, just in our informer factory usage as well. So I know that was a lot. So. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. 
And but another thing, last night while trying, I I figured out was we there are no Docker images in the Docker Hub repo. So yes. I had to create my build my own image and try it out. So it will so, be great if we can push those images. <laughs> yeah, so so Pratik, Pratik, I feel terrible if you had just come in after sixty merged. Everything that you hit was all the things that that are in. <laughs> I feel terrible that you, uh, you know, or maybe it's, actually you should definitely review 60 and tell me if there's other things that you missed because uh, yeah. It, 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 you have some so time. That, yeah, I, I expected it because there, there are a few things. We, the project is very new. So yeah. I was able to build it easily. So that's not a problem. So then no. I put it into my repo and then I, from my repo, I pulled it. So that worked. Well, that would be great. And, and, and definitely eyeball 60 as, as someone who recently tried to use this, your feedback on there would be excellent. Sure. Thanks. Cool. Awesome. Um, very cool. So anything else on the CRD front then, Kyle? Uh, not, uh, not really. And I'm looking, I don't see Chris Metz on the call, but Chris and I talked yesterday. Um, I know he was working on a kind of a day in the life of a packet thing, but, uh, but he also, uh, much like Pratik was interested in kind of getting this up and running uh, and he wanted to try it with Minikube. So I was, I was, I, I wasn't sure if he'd have time to take a look at it because our meeting that, that he and I, we kind of spoke later in the day, uh, but, but I thought he might have had some feedback on number 60 as well as another person who went and tried to get this all up and running, at least with what we have now. So. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, one other thing I actually did notice in the CRDs, and this is probably worth discussion um, um, because I, I don't really know what the right answer is here. So in, 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 in all the presentations I've been giving, I've been talking about a network service potentially have, exposing multiple channels. So we yep. have service definition, it can have multiple channels, each of them with their own name and payload. Now, um, this was done basically 100% because I was sort of, you know, imitating as closely as possible uh, services from Kubernetes. Um, I noticed that in the, the stuff that you currently have in there, you only have essentially a, ser one a service equals one channel. Now, honestly, in the examples I've tried to work with this, damned if I've actually found a good example for multiple channels, right? So. I'm in no way complaining. I, I'm simply saying at some point we should probably talk about whether or not we can think of cases where we would need more than one service per channel. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and this is actually another area where I wish that uh, Chris was here because, because he has some, I think he has some feedback uh, on that as well. Yeah, the, the only one that comes immediately to mind is, so let, let's say for example that I have a network service and I expose a channel that handles a payload IPv4 and a channel that handles payload IPv6. That's the one example that comes to mind, right? It's the same logical service, but you know, you're getting L3 payloads in both cases, but you, you handle v6 and v4 often quite differently. Um, so yeah, I'm just- and, and I agree with that. My only, my mm -hmm. only, Concern is, you know, and obviously it seems like we might want to solve some of these simple cases at first, but but if it, I, I guess my, I guess the thing would be, I, I don't, it doesn't seem so far like it's a lot of work to carry multiple uh, channels at this point from a code perspective. So as long as that maintains, maybe we should leave that flexibility open for down the road um, rather than closing it down now and then having to later change the model and everything, you know? One other thing we may want to do is we may actually want to loop in SIG networking for a little bit of wisdom here, because my understanding is that historically services did not start out as multi-port things. Um, and so they, they, they went multi-port for a reason. Um, and it would be good for us to have a clearer understanding of why and what their, what their feeling is about whether that turned out to be a good decision. Makes sense. Um, you know, because on the one hand, I, I like making things as simple as possible for the for developers. Um, you know, on the other, you know, this is not a huge overhead, and it does introduce additional flexibility. So I'm really curious other people's thoughts. I'd probably go with Kyle. I mean, leaving it in is easier than taking it out, and as you stumble across use cases. <laughs> rub up against. I mean, right. I, I think. I mean, it, it, it does have a valid point, but, but um, I, I guess. I guess before we remove it, I, I think we yeah, we, we should just we should just talk with you know talking with the Sig Network folks to see if they have some use cases as well, or just kind of circling back uh, 
to really ensure. Uh, well, I mean, it, it was sort of what their experience is and how they feel about their own decision. I mean, I, I, I'm sure we've all been there where, you know, somebody is sort of copying something that you were responsible for and you're like, don't do that. That was a bad idea. I can't get out of it yet anymore because it's already set in stone. But, but if I had to do it again, I'd never do that, right? I, we've all been there. <coughs> so <just coughs> how they feel the, about The about thing I thought, I thought about last night we need to think about a little bit is how we integrate with Service Mesh. Because we open up new channels. I mean, Service Mesh is trying to have a data plane and a control plane. Mm -hmm. The Service Mesh data plane is on the Kubernetes network. Mm -hmm. We're opening channels in a different network. And I want to apply security or policy from Istio. There's now this um, invisible network running around. <laughs> <coughs> that, that, that is actually something we should think about as well. Um, you know, and I, I think you actually end up thinking about it. In, yeah, I think you brought up two things. One is your point about you know, the invisible network piece. The other one is that we may have some use cases where, um, you know, to, to sort of the via, the, 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 the thing you're working via is not the Kubernetes network, it's some other network. So imagine for a moment that I've got a box that has a physical NIC that's connected to some magic network like my radio network. Um, and I want to reach a network service that is only reachable via the radio network. Um, you know, that, that may be something we have to think about as well. Yeah. Um, you know, I would say definitely the default should be via the Kubernetes network, but um, there, there will be cases where, you know, that, that's not going to be quite the thing. Um, so, yeah, we definitely need to think through some of those. Um, do you, would you be willing to sort of, you know, put together sort of a crisp statement of those problems for either the mailing list or the meeting next week, John? <laughs> you see how that works, John? Yeah. No, I should, now, now you see the oppression inherent in the system. <laughs> this is a very good motivation for people to shut up and be during meetings. Sure. It's amazing how little disagreement I get under the system. <laughs> sure. Give me, give me an AI. Okay. Cool. Awesome. I shall stop having these thoughts in the middle of the night again. Yeah, I, 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 I wish you better luck with that than I have. Um, <laughs> awesome. Cool. <coughs> Anything else on um, you know, developer activity? Cool. We, we've had a pretty full week. Awesome. Shall we move on to review of the use case uh, mapping stuff? We can. There's probably not much there. Um, Prem said he did something on the distributed bridge, but I don't well, see. I mean, I see one diagram he's added. Just well, keep, going, keep going there. Uh, diagram there. there. I'm not sure if it was different from one last week, but there's not much more. I think okay. he's traveling. So um, yeah, no, I know he's he's actively traveling. He's going to be out for. Um, he's going to be on vacation for the next few weeks, uh, traveling to India. Uh, although he swears he's going to still show up to the calls when, he, when he's not in the air. Uh, and, and so, you know, my expectation is he was frantically trying to get everything squared away so he could go. So, I mean, just in general, for these cases, it'd be useful if people would comment about things that um, are missing or not clear. I would give an AI to everybody and just, you know, add some annotations to the document. And I'm sure Prem and I and everybody else can, you know, help um, add more clarity. Yep. That's a good idea. I think getting some feedback would be, you know, <clears throat> and I have, you know, minimal ego about people, you know, crit criticizing. Yeah. 
Kyle's yeah, point. I, 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 I tend to agree with you. When, when someone is criticizing things, for me at least personally, it means either A, I need to rethink them, or B, I'm expressing them poorly and I need to improve that expression of the idea. Yep, correct. So. Feels um, <clears throat> cool, awesome. So we're moving right along. Um, the meeting time planning stuff. So there was an AI last week that Prem was supposed to send out a new poll or Google form for this. I don't think that actually happened. Uh, do we have Mike on the call? Because I think the other one, the other sort of thing that came up was if he had any concrete people who were actually having the problem with this being on Friday. And I don't think we heard back on that. And I don't see him on the call. Does anyone else want to speak to this, uh, or shall we uh, send, you know, move it forward next week again? Yeah, I think we should give this one more week and then just remove it and keep this slot personally. Totally fair. Totally fair. Cool. Back, now, now for the really fun part. Action planning for next week. So um, in action planning for next week, code activity, what are folks looking to do for next week? Well, I'm going to still try to, uh, I'm going to be trying to tackle 59, I think. Okay. The other thing that I'm going to do that's tangentially related to this that Frederick and I talked about, I'm going to come up with kind of a, uh, a almost a refreshed example of how to do CRDs as well. Um, Frederick and I were going to kind of co-write a blog post on, on this as well. Okay. Yeah, some some context behind that. There was a bunch of blog posts that half implement CRDs, um, and weren't, weren't, we weren't able to find any that show in full how to make them work, which tells us that the people who wrote the posts oh, didn't think they really work. So we thought oh, it'd be cool. a good area yeah. to <coughs> write about. That is good. Real, real, real quick, what is issue 59? So I can get oh, that. Issue 59 is the deletion problem with the current CRD code. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, there's a half blog post from I think Red Hat folks about CRDs, how to how to generate the code of the right. CRD. There's, there's that one. There's like a there's a half one there. There's another gentleman that last year had an example repository and took it most of the way. But uh, but yeah, there's it'd be nice to get like one concise. Here it is fully. You know, yeah yeah. And including writing the controller side using the informers and and you know actually implementing some business logic and stuff like that so yeah that part is a little confusing for the first timers the yeah. informers listed the first time i tried it it took me like a while just to understand those listers informers and everything that part is especially tricky <laughs> yep that sounds like a very useful thing then um cool uh, anything else kyle before i move on to, to pestering frederick uh, that's, I, I think that's about it. I mean, and I, I, I'll also, I mean, for anyone else pushing pull requests, I'll dedicate some time to reviewing things next week as well. So. Excellent. Many thanks. Cool. Um, Frederick, any ambitions for next week? Uh, well, I was going to also take a look at what, um, uh, example, like we we need to work out sort of like a hello world story that that others can use for for the network service mesh and so uh, and see if we can start working uh, working towards that so I mean it could be simple as something like uh, chain these multiple things together and have have one of them respond or or echo or or so on. But uh, yeah, I, th I think we, if, I, I, from a coding perspective, I, I don't know what, th what that means just yet. So I, so I need to work. I, 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 I'm, suddenly, I'm suddenly struck with the evil desire to, to put together the ping network service. It responds. Yeah, well, that's, that's what I was thinking is it needs, it needs to be something that we can get through on both the, in both directions. And so even just working out what, what do we want to demonstrate as like a, as a starting point, and eventually it may turn into a boilerplate for people who want to uh, who want to build out their their first chain, so they can learn about it. Yeah, one but thing that comes, one, thing, one thing that comes immediately to mind that shouldn't be so hard, I think, would just be doing um, a quick tunnel cross. So 
I have something that talks VXLAN and it needs to talk to something that talks GRE. You know, what do I do? Um, you know, maybe just sort of brainstorming a little bit here. Um, you know, simple transforms like that. So. Yeah, and the, the other thing that I want to, to do that's, that's aiming towards this as well is mm -hmm. to start loading these, um, these things up as, uh, as uh, services, as, as daemon sets and so on. So, um, and to get some Kubernetes config files to checked into the, uh, into the repo so people can, can start applying that. So uh, that's a whole multiple set of tasks, which range from creating the YAML files to creating the, the images. Uh, we have to work out how do we want to get the images uh, onto some repository somewhere, and uh, which means we have to build images somewhere. So I think that we need to start working that particular path out so that uh, so that we can have a, a deployment uh, a deployment story as well. And this will help as well with the with the long term goal of getting integration tests in place for uh, for network service mesh. So like the use case that we just talked about earlier, whatever use case that ends up being. We'll be able to to take that particular use case and turn it into an integration test that tests it from, from end to end. And so, oh, absolutely. So I'm thinking that we need to start working in in that particular direction just to uh, to act as a as an anchor and uh, simultaneously validate our design choices. Like we, if while we're working through it, we find we may find problems with the design that we may need to to tackle. And I think that the best way to work these things out is to actually come up with a concrete example and work towards it. Well, and the nice thing about doing it with the hello world case is effectively then we can turn use cases into integration tests. Um, and I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, it, it would be so. So along these lines, if, if you all want to take a look at PR 60, that was my, kind of my intent was that moves us kind of into that direction a bit because from, from just the CRD perspective, um, that, that has enough logic to almost be like a super simple integration test of, you know, hey, we've got it up and running, uh, you know, network service mesh is running as a daemon set, we can go and create the CRDs, then we can actually create CRD objects and verify they're all still there and they came up. Perfect. So yeah. I would echo what Ed's saying is like, can we start tying use cases into code? Because yeah. I think as we go through, that will sharpen up the use cases because we actually say this is how you implement them. And I think to Fred's point, we'll identify gaps. Of things yeah, definitely. I, I, I definitely think so. And, and um, I think we almost, I think we have enough of the plumbing implemented now to get to that point of doing the actual use case and stuff. Well, awesome. <coughs> um, so, and not to put you on the spot, but Pratik, it sounds like you, you may have ambitions this week as well. I'm, I'm sorry? You may have ambitions this week as well? Yeah, I haven't looked through the whole code yet. I, I found some of the issues, so I, just, I was just trying to tackle them. So whatever I find across, I'll try to add PRs accordingly. And if you guys have any particular task I can tackle, I'd love to help. Cool. I, I know that, that, Kyle, you made an attempt to get some issues that were beginner friendly in the GitHub repo? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so Pratik, take a look at the issues there. And uh, some of that stuff is, 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 you know, relatively simple and some of them are a little bit more complex, but definitely. And, and if you're, if, I don't know if you're on IRC or not, but jump on IRC and get on the network service mesh channel as well, because that's another great way. Sure, I'll try and join today. Cool. Yeah, there's a ton of discussion that happens there. Yeah. Um, cool. Awesome. And the other thing I just wanted to just get at some thoughts around it was what was the rationale of not running the daemon set for the network service mesh on all the nodes? Like we have to label the node specifically for it to get scheduled on that node. So I was just trying to know, is there any specific reasoning I, behind it? I don't think there is any at all, really. Um, that was just a, that was a simple way to get it going. And, and, I, and I guess the other way is and, and actually, this is probably a good discussion point. You know, by doing it that way, at least initially, we're not requiring people to run it on every node. <coughs> we don't come in as being onerous that we have to run everywhere. 
Um, well, so, I mean, one of the ways we might approach that, um, just to make people's lives easier, um, is you know, in the YAML file you're building, you know, effectively have it just apply the daemon set everywhere, and then okay. comment out the stuff with, you know, put a commented section with the, the piece you would uncomment and instructions if you want to run it on a subset. That way it's really clear, okay, if you don't want to run it everywhere, this is how you do it. But I, I suspect, like, for the kicking tires point of view, most people are just going to spin up a cluster and try it at this right. stage. Because when I just tried, I saw, okay, it's a daemon set. It should just go on each node. Then I saw, okay, I have to put a label because there is a selector. So then I, had, I was a little confused. Is there any rationale behind putting it on specific nodes or it can come up on all nodes? That's no, right. it, it can definitely come up on all nodes. If you want to submit a patch uh, or a pull request for that, that's fine too. Okay, sure. Cool, well, thank you. Yeah, Next. yeah that's, that's my opinion. It should, be, it should be a daemon set and we should have at least well, we should have one running on every knee, on every node that has a cubelet. So, okay, cool, yeah. cool, <coughs> awesome. Uh, anyone else have any ambitions around code for next week? Cool. Uh, use cases. Anyone have use case ambitions for next week? That's not surprising given that, that, that Prem is in the air right now. So my, my, when I spoke to him yesterday, he had quite a lot of ambitions that he was excited about, but I'll, I'll leave it to him to sort those out. Um, I, will, I will try and take a look at the code and use case and see if I can draw a line between the two. I'll probably ping Fred and Kyle. Cool. If I can get some cycles. But my next week is kind of a little... We, we know how that goes. But that's why these are ambitions, not commitments. Um, <laughs> awesome. Cool. So anything else that folks have in terms of um, action planning for next week they think we should capture here? Other things that people are planning on doing? Excellent. So we, we, we now sort of get to the section of our, you know, our meeting where we've, we've got open space to talk about some of the conceptual issues here. Um, I, I don't know how many of you folks were there. I did give a presentation to uh, SIG Networking yesterday. Um, and, and in that presentation, there was an amazing uh, conceptual breakthrough in how I'm explaining this. And that conceptual breakthrough was, I remembered to, to explain what the, what the data plane is doing, which I'd previously not done, um, which I feel a little bit silly about. So you know, we can sort of walk through conceptually any sort of stuff that folks have they want to go through any sort of unanswered questions, areas we need to explore, uh, et cetera. You don't have to, all have to speak at once. <laughs> and I'm, I'm perfectly happy, by the way, to conclude the meeting early if we've run through the business that folks have. Um, you know, you know I just wanted to make sure, I, I always want to make sure I leave the door open because Every time people come with questions, the, the way the, the explanations get clearer to other people, right? So, you know, those questions end up being intensely valuable. So, uh, so maybe one thing, I was in the meeting <laughs> while listening in. What do you think the next steps are, Ed? I mean, we've got a, you've done a good presentation. I think most people got it. How do we follow up to a line? Or... Yes, I, I think there are sort of two things, and I, I in some sense, when, when, when Tim asked that question yesterday, I was having such a good time, I forked it. So I, I've, because what it really comes down to is we need to decide from, yeah, I think we're on a really good path in terms of actually getting shit done. From a formalism point of view, we need to figure out whether it makes sense to seek to be a uh, working group under SIG networking um, or a CNCF working group. And my sense is that it's probably in part a question that should be posed to SIG Networking uh, to see what their opinion is about you know, where they'd like us to be. Um, because you could look at it one of two ways. You can either say, I mean, in fact, I think you heard Tim on the call look at it one of two ways. You can either say, um, this is completely orthogonal from what SIG Networking is doing in Kubernetes, which is actually a good thing, in which case we might want to be a CNCF working group. Um, or you could sort of say, well, that's true and it's a good thing, but it's also true that SIG networking could gain benefit from you know, building some things on top of this when we get there. And 
both are, I think, are valid points of view. It's just sort of a matter of what that community wants. Does that make sense? Regardless of which way it goes, there still has to be, I think, fairly close working between the two groups because mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's, they're not ships in the, in the night. You know, okay. They definitely have to have at least um, awareness. Mm -hmm. and, at least, and, minimum, and minimum, maybe common tomology. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I did finally dispel service function chain, goddammit. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, Ed, do you, yeah. uh, I might have missed this because I was out mm -hmm. and traveling yesterday, but do you have uh, a link to your presentation to Cygnus Network? Yeah, it's actually, it should be up now on the Legato Network Service Mesh GitHub. So if you go to the GitHub, it should be listed there in the readme.md. All right, thank you. Um, and, and as I said, I feel silly that that was the first time I actually explained the entire data plane part of the story. I, I, uh, this is George. Uh, I have George. a question. Yeah. Uh, actually, John mentioned that earlier. Uh, what's the relationship with the network service mesh with service mesh? Ah, well, so think about it. Um, hang on. I actually have, I think, a good slide that helps with visualizing this. Let me see if I can dig it out. It's really an issue of layers. Yeah, load, 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 load. Hang on. Okay. So, let me see if I can find the slide I'm looking for. Ah, here's the slide I'm looking for. It's really a matter of layers, right? So um, what, what service mesh is working with is primarily L4 through L7, right? So it's the how do I proxy TCP ports around? How do I, uh, how do I route HTTP2 messages across a variety of available TCP connections, that kind of stuff? Um, and, and it does that really nicely. And then what we're looking at in network service mesh is primarily things that L2 and L3. So I have Ethernet frames that I need to treat as payloads or IP packets, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah I understand this part. Uh, mm -hmm. So that, does that mean a network service mesh will extend service mesh, which basically inherited everything we had in service mesh? Or it's a, you, you basically select one or the other? Oh, they, they should be utterly compatible. Now, Modulo, a couple of comments that, that, that John had made, where if he wants Istio to be able to operate over some network that's been, some network service that's been plugged in by network service mesh that Istio doesn't understand. There could be an understanding mismatch there, but I think that should be rectifiable because the Istio guys do have ambitions of not solely being tied to Kubernetes and being able to do Istio service meshes across multiple clusters like that. I, I, I don't think it's the the issue of control plane that's the issue because it has pluggable modules. Mm -hmm. It's the data plane piece. If, because you, you know, issue can plug into NGX, um, Envoy, a bunch of others. It's a question of how do you get the information from the data plane into Istio? So the data plane is now network service mesh. How does it talk to Istio and how does Istio apply policy into? Well, and and, and, and I would also say, oh, should it? Oh, should, oh even should, should it. it? I mean, yeah, should it? Because the thing is, I, I don't think Istio naturally understands very well um, issues at layer two and layer three, and and neither do I expect us in network service mesh to have the first clue about stuff that happens at L seven, right? Um, so you know, th there's an interesting open question to think about of, of whether Istio should be aware of network service mesh at all, um, and if so, in what manner? But but I, I think clearly the goal, George, is. Let, let the service mesh boys handle L4 through L7 and let network service mesh handle L2 and L3. And then we get you know, a nice traditional layering scheme the way we all know and love in networking. Yeah, yeah, and that's why we need a network service, la uh, service mesh because we're missing the L2, L3 layers. Mm -hmm. uh, the question I have is, uh, does everything uh, moving on have in the service mesh will automatically pick up by network service mesh? Yeah, and I think that's what John was getting at is, what does, what does Istio need to know to operate over the network service mesh? So think of it from a layer point of view. Um, I, I think you have the network service mesh, 
and then you have the service mesh that you would like to be able to work over the network service mesh, but that doesn't uh, okay. really mean okay. the user understands much about what's happening there. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. Cool. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, anything else folks want to talk about before we conclude for the day? All right, cool. I will see you guys next week. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>